Soft costs comprise 64% of a solar PV system's total cost, which means installation methods and component selection are crucial elements of solar installer's business model today. Today on the pitch, Jason Higginson, Senior Director of Marketing with AP Systems, will tell us how multi-module microinverters can be a competitive advantage for solar installers during the COVID slowdown and beyond. You know, the typical microinverter that most people know is that one-to-one -one ratio, microinverter to panel. And AP Systems, you've built a brand as the multi-module microinverter company. So I can do that math in terms of reduction in product per job. Uh, but can you expand that out a little bit to me and walk me through what the impact um, to the speed and efficiency of an installation is when you're reducing the number of microinverters? If you think about it, you know, installing four microinverters, for example, it's the, it's the same amount of time, whether it's a conventional one-to-one -one microinverter or one of our um, AP systems, like four-in-one microinverters, the QS1. By the time you're finished, you're four panel ready with the standard microinverter, but with our QS1, you're 16 panel ready. So it's significantly faster. And we've also worked to accelerate the setup for the BOS and the ECU to, to get the installers off the roof faster and really onto that next job. The cost is like similar in like in terms like you're reducing the amount of cost because you have fewer products as well? Exactly. So the, uh, the well, the, the cost is um, it's even more improved because when we uh, first developed these uh, these microinverters, you know, we wanted to to intentionally develop something that was going to be uh, a cost reduction for the installers on the product side as well as on the installation side. If you think about it, combining four microinverters into one, you know, mechanical body, we are able to do about thirty percent shared components. Which, um, while we still have independent MPPT per channel, that shared component allows us to uh, to reduce that cost. So if you think about it, that would be a component that's shared. Those would be four individual ones and four individual microinverters. So you'd have four times that particular component. So that sharing of the components allows us to, you know, reduce the, uh, the economics of the unit, the cost impact to the installer on cutting edge MLPE technology. So, and so we um, uh, are, you know, very excited about not only bringing that cost reduction, but then you add on top of it that rapid installation time, and it just makes it head and shoulders over uh, what else is being offered today in the MLP marketplace. So then what about uh, versus a string inverter design, you know, the, the old standard? Um, what are the efficiency comparisons there? So many string inverter, uh, the string inverters today are really utilizing DC optimizer, so you see that quite often those will go onto each panel. So you essentially have the same issue of having to mount an individual unit uh, to each module on the rail, just like with the conventional microinverter. So with string inverters, you have that time consuming step. And then after the installation on the roof, you know, you still have a string inverter to mount and, uh, and commission. So from the installer's perspective, there's a big difference in labor there. Um, and then let's say that the homeowner then wants to add more panels over the garage. Uh, with the string inverter, then you would need to either initially oversize your, your first inverter purchase, just in case you might want to add onto your system someday, or uh, you would then need to purchase a new inverter to handle that new increased capacity for the garage, right? But with microinverters, it's an additive process rather than a rip and replace. So the same ECU, handles the additional microinverters, there's no headache. Um, also rapid shutdown compliance, it's inherently uh, included in the microinverters by design. So there's no concern about uh, 690.12 compliance. Do you think you could maybe add some of this up for me? Like exactly what are some of the cost per watt differences that we are talking about here? I don't, whether it's anecdotal or some different scenarios. Yeah. yeah, obviously you're going to, it's going to differ based on uh, factors like crew size, size of the installation, you know, what capacity you're building that, that solar installation to, uh, the equipment that we're comparing to, you know, the conventional micros or string inverter with optimizers. But when we pencil out the product cost savings, we typically come in 10 to 15% below other MLPE solutions. And, and that's before you, you even calculate the, uh, the online labor savings. So then if you consider 
that many installations have around three crew members, uh, how much they get paid per hour, uh, then reducing an hour of uh, install time on the roof, and then reducing an hour of time on the ground. Um, and then you look at it over all the installations uh, an installer is doing in a month, it, it adds up to a significant amount of money for installers. And uh, also considering the fact that since our products are so small and light, it's capable capable of a single crew member installation, which is especially relevant right now during COVID. It sounds like, and maybe you even have examples like a, a customer who starts doing installations this way and it like maybe changes their business model in a way or uh, change things operationally. That's exactly what happens. We, we see installers that, that fully adopt the AP systems, not just product model, but installation model. And what we see a lot of these uh, installers doing particularly the ones that handle high volume is what they'll do is pre-configure a lot of that in their warehouse before they leave to the job site. So pre-configuring the ECU with the dedicated microinverters that are going specifically to that job. I mean, some people, you know, they throw, they got a couple of jobs, they throw everything in the truck and they figure it out when they get there. Um, you know, these ones go to this job, these ones go to that one. But when they're, they're dedicated to uh, streamlining the install, they have everything pre-configured, goes on the job site. It goes in, it's plug and play. And some of them are able to accelerate their, uh, their installation speed to use the same crew to do uh, two and sometimes three installations in a single day. Are there any situations though where the, the multi-module approach gets tricky when you're designing or trying to configure the system? I mean, are there roofs that somehow just somehow maybe don't work quite right? We haven't really run into a scenario yet where our products don't work. Not everything has to be combinations of two and four uh, because the YC600 and QS1, they can be used together in the same system and on the same circuit. Mm. Uh, they can have shared components like cables and caps, uh, which is again, part of that intentional effort to increase uh, the system design installation flexibility, reduce the number of units and accessories that an installer uh, would need to order and stock. But if, for example, you have seven PV modules, uh, you use two QS1 units and you cap one channel. The same with the nine PV modules, you would use two QS1s, one YC600, and then cap one channel on the 600. So the question we get asked pretty often is, hey, I'm paying for that portion of the microinverter that I'm capping off and not using. So, and it's true. And when you look at the numbers, because of that reduced cost at the beginning, it, based in the design of the microinverter um, on a, uh, that combined consolidated two module or four module, we still come in at a better price point than competing solutions. So uh, you add in DC extensions to reach uh, other panels, uh, we, we still win. Okay, well, you asked the, my follow-up question, so I'm glad you asked and then answered it. That was very, uh, also efficient, so thank you <laughs> okay. with the theme here. Um, what about post-installation? Uh, you know, there uh, might be some installers out there that hear MLPE right off the bat and, you know, power electronics, maybe they just see truck rolls in their future. Um, can you address maybe some advantages or calm some, some concerns about down the road post-installation? Uh, so first, it's important to know that microinverters are typically mounted under a PV module and at least an inch off of the roof. So their exposure to elements is, is not very high. So, but even still our products have undergone significant testing, including 20,000 hours accelerated life testing. Uh, our products have a NEMA 6 IP67 uh, metal enclosure. They're not made of plastic like some designs. Um, and then uh, we had DNVGL uh, actually test our dual and quad micros, expose them to a, a battery of tests like uh, their freeze test, uh, over voltage, uh, water submersion to check for water intrusion, high temp, and they just passed with flying colors. So even if something were to, to go wrong, uh, we have a, a responsive and local support team. We don't send any calls overseas. Our team is also able to tunnel into the system uh, to uh, to look remotely and see what's going on, uh, resolve many of the issues that uh, an installer might see uh, just right there through the internet so that uh, it saves them on a, on a truck roll. 
and um, at the very least, you know, point the installer in the right direction. You know, it may be possibly a, a panel issue or disconnect the cable or, you know, check on the ECU communications, not reaching the inverters or something. And I guess kind of going back to just thinking about in general, the uh, serving multiple panels with the, the one microinverter, are you losing any granularity in data that you'd be having on that one-to-one -one ratio? Not at all. And that's exactly what we, we tried to achieve is we want uh, everything in that individual module level uh, analysis of uh, the production um, of that uh, individual PV module while having all of the benefits of that, um, that combination in, in the unit. So uh, you gain all of those benefits and you sacrifice uh, none of the uh, the module level detail. Trying to poke holes in this, Jason, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't stop these inverters. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, well, hey, what other is there anything else you sh uh, wanted to mention uh, before I let you go today? Maybe it's something mm -hmm. we didn't touch on or something coming down the road. Two things. One, um, I think the communication in these systems uh, tends to be a little underrated when people think about communication. Like most of the systems today are are power line communication. Uh, which can easily be, you know, interfered with. I mean, they can't go through your typical GFCI receptacle. Also, being able to extend the um, uh, the the speed of this communication. So there's so many data points now that are having to route back from the microinverters through the gateway back to the cloud, and uh, and then in some cases, some of those updates that need to go the opposite direction. Uh, to you know, upgrade firmware like in our case, we can upgrade the uh, the the microinverters remotely. Um, that really, we went to a wireless Zigbee. It's 2.4 gigahertz mesh network that uh, is a uh, is higher speed, up to three times faster than than PLC. And um, so to to have that same uh, amount of data on this slower network, it's it's kind of the equivalent of going back to dial up. I don't know, I couldn't do it, could you? And the second thing I wanted to mention is uh, something we have coming down the pipe, which is um, pretty exciting. We have a, a three-phase product many of you know about. It's the YC1000, but it's uh, getting close to uh, to five years since uh, we've uh, we've come out with a, uh, a new three-phase product. And this one's going to be, uh, uh, it's called the QT2, and it's going to be higher capacity. Uh, it will also, when, uh, when it comes out, we'll have it... Uh, uh, Rule 21 for California. So uh, that's exciting. We're looking for that um, uh, close to the end of the year or early next year. Uh, so that's just a little peek behind the curtain. For more info on AP Systems, head to the links in the description. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs>